I'm going to work on the eyeglasses next and I'm going to start by adding a little bit of titanium white into the eyeglass area. Let's and let's use a angle brush this time and I'm just going to do a very little corner load just a tiny little bit on the very tip of the brush and then blend most of that off. I've got extender in the brush, blotted it off. I want this to be pretty transparent and I'm going to go inside the top of the open area right on top of where the beard is inside both of the glasses. See if I need just a touch more color in there. I want it to be pretty transparent. It's you know more like a wash but I've got extender just so that I can blend it a little bit easier. Then in um, the rest of the glasses I'm going to use um, medium gray and I'll go back to my small dirty dancer. I'm going to put extender in both ends of the brush, wipe it off. Um, and then the medium gray, just a little, little tiny dab of extender into that. Okay, and on the top edge of the eyeglasses, I'm going to come in from the um, edge of the black just a little bit so that it'll still look like it's outlined almost. And I'm going to pull a little bit thicker line that's going to be the actual top edge. And then I'm just going to barely soften. I don't want to pull it out, but I just want to take down that sharp edge just a notch on the right side here. So just kind of blending lengthwise. And there's a little piece that's um, under where the finger is. I actually want a little less in there because that's a little bit darker area. And I can always put a little wash of black on top after too, which might be the easiest way to handle that. Uh, inside the eyeglass area, going to add the medium gray coming in from the edge a little bit and softening that. And if I get too carried away I can always come back with a wash of black on top. Same thing on the other side. I need just a touch more extender into my paint. It's not coming off the brush. That's better. Flip my brush over and soften. I still want to see black on each side of this, so if I accidentally go all the way to the edge, I can always come back and outline it or I can try and remove a little bit right now, but I think I'll outline with the black after. I think that'll be easier. And then a skinnier on the top edge on the bottom half. And then also on the top edge of the other piece of the glasses. and in towards where it bends there and then just carefully soften that edge. And also on the nose piece. Okay, then I will go back and take my liner brush and some of the black 
Uh, this time I'm just going to thin it with water because I don't need to blend it. I'm just going to do a little bit of outline. Make sure that I have a black edge on the outside of the gray. And where the opening is. Make sure I outline that top area. Okay, then um, I want to get a little white dot and a line inside um, the glass. Uh, and I could use either a the tip of the brush of the liner or I can switch to a stylus. Just a solid little white dot and then a line. kind of gives a little look of shine. Okay, on the eyeglass, I'm going to put just a little bit brighter on this one area here. I'm going to go back to my Dirty Dancer, get a little bit of gray and mix some white into it. Right about here, the eyeglasses had a little bit higher shine. So get a little bit of the white right on top of your gray line and then just kind of soften your starting and stopping point. Make sure the edge isn't too sharp. Okay and then also a little bit in the corner of the glass. A little bit of white with extender in it right on top of the gray just to make a couple little spots a little bit brighter and somewhere over in here and I'm not waiting for the gray to dry it's okay to go ahead and do that while it's wet so I didn't go all the way across I'm just hitting some smaller areas and a little bit just in this area here. Okay, and that's it for the eyeglasses. Pretty simple for those areas. Uh, then what I've done on the ornaments is I've gone ahead and I base coated them in with medium white and I want those to dry real well. That's just one coat that I've done. Um, the colors that we base coat are a red, a blue, and a purple and they show up better on the medium white than it would be if I just use the black. That the, Especially the red, it's so transparent you want to be able to get a good coverage. While that is all drying, let's go back and take another look at the hand. I want to do one more uh, darker color in on those fingers. And I'm going to use um, the, uh, let's see, let's put just a little bit of burnt umber into our darkest color. Remember the darkest color we used for shading was uh, the shading flesh and the burnt sienna mixed together. Now I'm going to put just a little bit of burnt umber in there to darken it one more time and make sure I have a little touch of extender in there as well. And I want to get a few areas just a little bit darker. Uh, one of the areas that I want to do is this thumb that's holding the eyeglasses. And let's maybe zoom in just a little bit so that you can see better where I'm working. So underneath the finger that's on top of it and then soften that and on the other side of the eyepiece as well. And if that side just ends up getting filled in, that's okay. Okay, and then I want to go uh, in the uh, palm of the hand here, in that top area. I want to get, but this time I'm not going to 
necessarily pull much into those little creases, just the teeniest little hairline. I want to keep that mostly in the palm. Pull it down to a little bit of a, a triangle and then soften. I don't want to go all the way down with this color. Kind of check out the finger, see if you need any um, variation in any of the colors uh, or, you know, any of the areas where they may not be showing up against each other. For instance, um, these two fingers right here, I want just a little bit more contrast between them. So I'm going to put just a little hairline separating them. and soften. And I think also above, just in that little corner, a little bit of this darker as well. And then I think I'm pretty much going to leave them alone. You always have the option of doing a little bit of outlining here and there if you need to clean any of the areas up. For instance, if I need to sharpen um, any of the fingernails, I could switch back to my liner brush. Uh, I'd still put a little touch of extender in there just in case you end up needing to blend, but you can actually, you know, go ahead and kind of touch up edges here and there just to make sure that the nails are the shape that you want them to be, or if you needed to do any of the shadow areas, use the shadow color to touch those up. Maybe just a little bit on the front of the finger there so it shows up better against the other one. So otherwise I'm going to leave the hand alone. I think the, the hand is done. I'm going to try not to use water because I want to be able to um, get a good coverage. Now if I were to have put this color on top of the black it would be pretty transparent and it wouldn't show up. To begin with, I'm going to ignore the shape of the little piece that's up on top. It's going to be easier if we just concentrate on a rounded circle and then come back and fix up that top little hook with the color. There again, try to get the water out of your brush so that you're using it straight and fresh from the bottle if possible. The purple ornament. And you could certainly make these any color you want. I was just trying to get a variety of color in the, in the project. I love color. And I love it bold and bright. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry before I start in on my shading and highlighting. So in the meantime, I'm going to take a pencil and sketch in where I want my ribbons to go. You could use um, your graphite paper and retrace them on again, but I think it's just as easy to go ahead and give yourself a, a little sketch. So the ribbons on each of the ornaments, they're going to come and they're going to tuck into one area of the hole. So I'm going to just come up from there. They'll come on the other side and come up. And give them each just kind of a little bit of a a gentle wiggle or wave so that they're not perfectly straight straight. I wouldn't want to take and use a ruler and and make them totally straight. And then I can do um, a couple of little stray ones coming down the side. When I run into a, a section I'm going to stop but f visually follow through with your eye and maybe give a little bit of a flip for where you end. So you decide how many little ribbons you think you might want to
put on there and don't be afraid to let them kind of overlap a little bit as well. And let's get another one coming down the middle here. So, as many as you'd like. They're just kind of fun. And then after I get started painting, I can decide if I want any more on there. Okay, I think the uh, red ornament is probably dry enough to go ahead and get started on that. Now all the ornaments are going to be basically the same thing. What I want to do is I want to try to create a, um, a lighter area right about in this area right here, that kind of like the upper left third. And I want to get um, darker on the outside and then I get lighter, lighter, lighter towards the center, creating a center area. So for my darker color, I'm going to use burgundy. Otherwise, I'm going to have to lighten up my naphthol red light with either yellow or white. Now, if I lighten it with white, it's going to be kind of pinky. Um, or I can, um, I'm also going to use some um, Piranon orange to uh, highlight. So I'm taking out a couple different colors here. And I'm going to use my double-ended brush and I'm not going to lay color down first only because my red is still fairly wet. So I'm not going to put extender on here first. I'm just going to put it into my paint color so that I can get this done a little quicker. So I've got extender in my brush at both ends and I'm picking up some of the burgundy. And I'm going to put the burgundy on the outside edge of the ornament. And I'm going to make it a little bit thicker in the bottom uh, right side. But I do go, I am going all the way around flip my brush and then soften away that edge and I'm I'm scrubbing just a little bit harder at the moment because I did not lay any extender down to begin with so I want to make sure I get that blended in. If I blend off too much, go ahead and put a little bit more back on. Let's get this outside edge just one more time. I want to make sure that's really dark, especially off to the one side. And soften. Okay, then for the first highlight color, I am going to go ahead, I rinsed my brush in water, but I re-put extender on, and I'm going to uh, use some of the Paranon Orange with a little drop of extender into that. And I'm going to start out um, in this upper third. Okay, and I'm going to put on a fairly large circle. Now I want to be able to see burgundy, naphthol red light, and then the orange. And I'm putting the orange on a little bit thick, but just kind of smoothing out the ridges. I don't want to go into the middle of the orange. I only want to catch that outside edge so that I keep that orange nice and bright. Okay, now I am going to let that dry before I do my final highlight on there uh, because otherwise I probably will mess into it. So let's go to the blue one. The blue one is going to have uh, phthalo blue as the shadow color. So I'm going to put a little bit of extender into the phthalo blue. And I'm going to use that to go all the way around the outside edge. And if it's easier to just do one half of the ornament at a time, it's not a bad idea. 
So if I wanted to just do more like a crescent shape and then stop and and soften that. And I still had red in my blender brush. I forgot to wash it out so I am putting extender in it and cleaned it on my paper towel. Soften that edge inside. Okay, and then do the other half. Lay the color down and soften. Okay, then for the highlight color, I'm going to have to add white into the aquamarine. And I think half and half is going to be a good mix. And add a little drop of what uh, extender into there. Okay, and then in this upper section, make a good size circle. It's probably about the size of a dime, maybe even a penny. Lots of paint, but kind of smooth out any ridge. Flip the brush over and just catch that outside edge. Okay, and then we'll let that dry. Let's go to the purple one. The purple one is going to have the dioxazine purple with extender in it. And I'm going to make sure that I clean my blender brush this time. Uh, and I can clean it by just adding extra extender in it and wiping it on the towel. So lay the color on the edge. And blend away that inside edge. And you decide if you want to switch to your larger Dirty, dirty Dancer for this one, because this one is a little bit larger. Continue on around, get a little bit more. Okay. Just really trying to work that down into the um, thickness of the canvas, into the little crevices and then stop and just catch that inside edge so I can get that to blend in. Okay, then for the highlight I'm going to mix white and purple together. Now it's got to be lighter than what you base coated it. So it's start out with white and then just put just a little touch of purple in there. If you start out with purple, it'll take you forever to try to get that to lighten up. Okay, and I'm going to put, this is going to be more the size of a nickel or a quarter for a highlight. If I get too transparent, it's going to take me more coat. So I do want to make sure that I have a lot of paint especially in that center area. Flip the brush over and soften away that outside edge. Wipe my brush on the paper towel in between. Get rid of the excess paint on that blender brush. Okay. 
and let that dry. Now, on the outside edge of these um, ornaments, if I take and I go at an angle and come down, I'm going to get a little reflected highlight right on the very edge. So just a skinny little line, just kind of taper it and then soften that. Just on that bottom kind of corner, and I'll do that the same with each of the other ones. So on the and I'm using the highlight color. So on the blue, I'll use the blue highlight that I mixed. Just a skinny little edge, but then soften with the blender brush. Carefully just pulling it the lengthwise. And the same with the red. I'll use the orange. Catch that outside edge. Let's move this down so you can see. And then soften. And if you want to wait till after your uh, shading is dried, you sure can. I'm just being very careful when I soften and blend it so that it doesn't interfere. Okay, while those areas are drying, I'll go ahead and start the ribbons. So I'll start with the purple. And the purple is the color that I base coated my ornament with. So that was the purple and the titanium white. Get a little bit more white out here. I'm on a kind of a middle value. And I'm just going to use. Um, water in it because this is just a base coat stage. This part is not blended. So thin it with a little water. And I've got one coming here. And it's going to tuck in to where it's not going to go on top of that little loop it'll go it'll stop when you run into it but then on the other side the other half of that this side is going to go through that little loop so even though I'm going to base that in with some of the metallic after it's just as easy to go ahead and put these on now I've got another one coming down connecting into the purple ornament This side goes through the loop. And I want to be able to see where those come up. So just visually continue on up somewhere. And just, you know, let your eye kind of follow so that you're getting it visually you're pulling it like it's going behind the other ornament. Um, and then I want red. So I'll use the naphthol red light and I'll get a ribbon coming down and I've just thinned it with water. These are ribbons, so they can be a little bit thicker. If you use a liner brush, they're going to be too skinny. They're not going to show up. Kind of stop when you run into the ornament. 